when I first started reselling, I did it as cheap as I possibly could. I was only doing it just to sell my family's clothing, and so I really didn't want to invest a lot into the process. At the time, we had a foam board that was white. We were going to use it for a kid's project and ended up having an extra one. So I used that, put it on top of my bathroom tub because the light above it is so incredibly perfect and since i was doing like toddler clothing and baby clothing it fit perfectly on that foam board but as i began to grow i started going onto a wall and hanging up things there focusing on the sunlight and the more i began to see this as a potential profitable business that i might actually want to start doing full-time that's when i decided to start investing into my business with different products that would help me streamline my processes make it better make me able to do more at a larger scale and that's what I want to talk about today I want to talk about the products that now I use on a daily basis that I couldn't see my life without in hopes that it's gonna help you with your journey too And hey, if this is the first time you're meeting me, welcome. My name is Ashley Wheeler. I have been a full-time reseller now for almost two years, which is just amazing. And I've actually been reselling since 2017. And when I say reselling, what that means is I get clothing from thrift stores or online arbitrage or just really wholesale or liquidation as a whole. And I sell on both Poshmark and on eBay. But today we're going to talk about the products that I use to help support what my business is. So the first one we're going to go into to is how do you store your inventory? And for me, when I first began, I had this entertainment center that had like the fabric boxes in them. Do you know what I'm talking about? I used those for my products because I had small clothing. It was super easy to hide behind, you know, my little family room. And I just really worked with that for quite some time. But I began to realize I'm gonna have women's clothing, I'm gonna have a lot more teen clothing. As I started to have more stuff that I was going through in my house, I was like, okay, this is not gonna work anymore. Let's go to a tote system. So I started to purchase clear totes. It's easier to look on the sides of the totes, which is why I like them. And I was doing it based on category. So I had like women's shirts, women's jeans, men's jeans, kids clothing. But after a while, I had five women's tops totes. It gets really hard to try to find items when it is inventoried like that. So this is what I went to and I'm gonna kind of do four items in one scenario. So the first thing is having a shelving. I really, really like having shelving versus having totes stacked onto each other. It's just really wear and tear on your body that's unnecessary. I love to have the shelves because then I can almost kind of lean it up against my chest and I can grab the stuff out. I don't always have to like pick them up and move the totes out of the way. So the shelving is really handy. I've found them both on Amazon. I found them at Home Depot and I've also found them at Buy Mart if you have Buy Marts close to you or anything kind of in that same scenario. Those tend to be the cheapest places, but honestly, I think you can find it in just about any store. I will take a photo right here of what those look like and I will actually put a link in the description below. Actually, all of the items that I'm talking about right now, I'm going to put them below. So you can actually utilize this as a resource later. If you're not at this place in your business where you're ready to purchase all of this stuff or maybe you're ready for a couple of these items but not necessarily all of them I'm gonna put all the links below so make sure you save this video so you can go back to it later too the next thing is obviously like I mentioned totes I kept the tote process but I changed the way I inventoried the items so now I actually have a letter or multiple letters on the front of my totes then I use bags that are like Ziploc bags but they're sized perfectly so I can put sweaters in them I can put bras in them I have different sizes sizes. So I'll actually link my sizes down below so you have a good idea of the ones that I use. And I think there's probably like three main sizes that I use. And then I have these SKU numbers that I put onto the poly mailers. So when I'm looking for the item, I look for A2016 and then I know to go to the letter A tote and look for 2016 in the tote. Then it's super easy because when something sells, I can take that bag again and reuse it. And then it can go into a different tote or I can actually use it in the same tote, whichever works out. So that's what I do when it comes to inventorying my items. And it has really helped my process. Now with coats, with larger sweaters, I do something a little different. I'm gonna be honest, it's not the best. So we're not gonna go into that one. <laughs> the next thing I use on a daily basis that honestly, you guys, 
I wish I had purchased so much sooner and I just didn't, is a Rolo printer. All it is, you guys, is a thermal printer. It's nice because you don't have to continue to purchase ink. You might be someone who might be going to a library or maybe a family or a friend's house right now to print out your labels, but I have to tell you, for being able to have it printed out right away and it is generated onto a large sticker and I don't have to tape it down, it actually saves me a lot of time. I really didn't realize how much time it was going to save me. And not to mention, depending on the delivery service you're using, you know, if you're using USPS, if you're using UPS or FedEx, sometimes you can go to those different companies and see if they actually have free supplies. And one of them being UPS, they actually do have the labels that are perfect size for your Rolo printers. So if you do use them on a regular basis, I would recommend going to their site, creating a business account and being able to get those. I think the first time I did it, I got five thousand label stickers for free and it still i'm still using it to this day so i'm very grateful for that and thankful that ebay provides the option for ups because it has really saved me but a rollo printer is the one that i've used i know there's dymo and actually a lot of other brands nowadays but rollo is the one that i first started with and it's still going strong so that's the one i'm going to be sticking with my next thing and to be frank you guys i'm not doing this in any particular order i want to give you the items that i use on a daily basis and i want you to figure out what is going to be the best next thing for you to purchase just for your business. I am going to say though, this next one that I'm going to talk about, you might want to consider it being your next thing. And that is lighting. Now I know there are some people who really like sunlight being able to photograph their items in that time of day because they feel like it gives them the most clear and crisp quality when it comes to your items. For me personally though, I live in the Pacific Northwest. I knew when I was coming out of summer, even when I was part-time, when it was starting to get more towards the fall, we literally go dark around 4 p.m. Like the sun starts to set around there. Winter is the worst. It's probably more around four at that time. But I knew that was coming and I was working. So I could not allow only a few hours of my day to be the only time I could actually photograph my items. So that's when I went to box lights. Box lights are not going to be the ones that I recommend. I just kind of want to share with you my journey and where I am today. Initially, I started with box lights. I liked it because you had two lights that were here directed towards the item. So it helps kind of diffuse some of the shadowing. However, when I decided to upgrade to a ring light, an LED ring light, and then also decided just recently to get LED like two lights that you can like bend and move around so I can use it for like my flat lay table. Holy smokes, I had no idea it could be so much brighter. So if you are interested in getting some lights, I would recommend either this ring light or this LED light. The LED light one is kind of cool because it's very versatile. You can have it standing and like I said, you can put it over like a table if you're trying to do any items that are smaller, such as belts, jewelry, bras, those sort of things, even kids clothing. So keep those in mind when you're considering your lighting process. The other thing is you can also use it for like YouTube videos or Instagram if you're on any of these other things as well. The next thing I'm going to talk about is the way I store my shoes. You guys, please consider this. If you are putting your shoes into totes, it's totally fine, especially if they're sneakers. Those are, you know, they're gonna kind of get beaten up. That's kind of typical for them. But if you have like leather shoes or nice heels, you do not want to scuff them up. And sometimes all it takes is just a little bit of a dent into it that dramatically changes the way that you photographed your item. So the way that I enjoy storing my shoes is on this shoe shelf. I really like this shoe shelf. It has, it's so nice because it really displays all of my shoes. I don't have to ever worry about where one shoe is. I actually have a whole wall of this shelf and none of them have ever fallen. None of them have ever broken. I've been doing this since 2017 and they are still all perfect. I will say as I created that wall, eventually I kind of rubber band each of the shelves together so they all kind of stays put. But nonetheless, I love the way that it stores and this shelf actually holds 50 shoes. If you've got like a standard typical shoe, if you've got larger, like tall boots and stuff like that, I only put them on like the top shelf. So that might be a place if you have too many of those that you might have to lay them flat. And so you wouldn't be able to store as many shoes, but I would recommend this if you are looking at different ways. Some other ways that I've seen people do it is getting one of those shoe shelves that you put on the back of your door. If you are a little bit more crunched for like space, that's also another way that you can store shoes. But again, don't make sure they're like squeezing 
using too many in one little slot. Otherwise, it could actually damage the condition of the shoe before it gets shipped out. And the last thing that I'm going to talk about today that I use on a regular basis is my clothing rack. So initially, when I first started reselling, I found this clothing rack that was probably like $20, $20, $30 at our local store. And boy, was that a big mistake. Every time I put up more than 10 or 15 items on this shelf, it fell over, it broke apart, it was not structurally stable. So I ended up deciding that I wanted to invest in a good clothing rack. So I ended up getting this industrial quality clothing rack. It's this one right here. And that one I have now had since 2017 and never has it broke. It is also on rollers. And so it's really easy to move around in my room. I do have a photographing room that also has my shoe shelf in it. And I really like that because I can kind of move that around. It's very versatile. The other thing that's really handy is on the sides, you can like pull it out and it actually has more clothing rack space. So if I'm working on like steaming items, then I can put the items that I want steamed off to one end and work at the ends. It's super nice in that regard. And actually I'm gonna go right into that one because that is the last thing that I wanna talk about is my steamer. So unless my items have like spots on them or they have marks that I need to wash out, I now I'm kind of at a place that I don't wash every single item. I do my best to sanitize and wash items when I do get them from the outlets. But when I'm just getting stuff from standard thrift stores, I will steam them and per what I've seen statistics and through other different resources is that steaming clothing items actually kills more bacteria than washing the items, which I also enjoy because I can't tell you how many times I've washed something and like something bleeds on something else and then the item that I purchased to list and sell in my store has now been ruined. So I really enjoy this steamer right here. It is one that I have used again since 2017 and it hasn't had any issues. I will do a cleaning cycle at least annually where you put water and I think it's white vinegar into it and you let it steam through. It kind of helps break down any of the buildup that has occurred through the hose part. But I also make sure I just use distilled water. So between those two things, this one has done really well for me. It steams my items beautifully. It's really easy to hang and work with. Uh, after a while, sometimes if it's getting too hot, it will start to drip a little bit, but that is really the only thing I have to complain about. It's super nice and it is much cheaper than some of the other steamers that I have seen on the market that other resellers recommend. So if you're kind of pinched for money, this would be the one that I would say at least get started with. And that's it for this video, you guys. I really hope that you enjoyed this. In fact, if you could do me the biggest favor, leave a comment down below. I can tell you about so many other products that I use, depending on if I'm working with liquidation, if I'm doing something supplies. Obviously, I do have a couple of videos about that. I will link them right here or here. I don't remember which one it is. <laughs> and but I want to know if you like this kind of video, put it down below. Tell me some other things you'd be interested in knowing as far as what products I use on a daily basis. And I would absolutely love to do that video for you guys. All right. I will see you next week. Bye.